you can't expect someone who is trying to eat and you're telling about um, I'm trying to build a flutter wish to be a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why you're talking to the wrong people. Are you, are you expecting not to take 20 now and go and eat from your business? Like, give him food. Yeah. Right? Let him eat first. So you need to. They, they say first of all, you, know, you don't look Mass at you don't look at money needs, yeah. how you see it. You have to look at money from the next man's point. Mm. One millionaire, if I drop on the table, shall I want my leave it? One millionaire, somebody else will see it and be like, man, oh. I'll take this money and I'll leave my dear. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have to see one millionaire from your perspective and not from my own perspective. <laughs> This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes. Nice. We got some money man in the building, Doctor. Ooh, serious money. We know where the, the money. Is. That's where I'm at right the now. The net worth of this table just shot all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <laughs> that's, that's a prayer point. <laughs> yeah, right. Wherever I go, the money, the, the, the net worth. So, yeah, so, yeah I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very, right. very excited to have someone that, um, you know, I think I met him very early into my journey in Nigeria. I say that he's someone that understands business. I've never met someone that understands business like he does. Okay. So, I know our listeners are going to have a lot of insights speaking to him. Mm-hmm. And so, I'd like to welcome Kaede to the I Move Back podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Good, to, good to be here. Yeah. And who do we have joining you today? At um, Engineer Toy Ulu. Yeah. <laughs> be my guy way back. And I think we would tell some stories about how how we got to here, where we're going to. Okay. Right. I'm excited. So I always, I, always I, I had a very quick chat with you on the history from engineering to finance. And these yeah. are, I, people that do that are very smart. So I, I like the fact that you have a lot of smart people around you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's, a, that's even me. I, I, I trained as an engineer, but I wish I switched to finance. I just, I couldn't do the Excel, man. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't do the Excel sheets. Well, no, it's, it's quite easy, though, for an engineer. It's uh, that's easy good. to switch. Yeah, mm. That's good. And you know, in, in the UK, engineers are one of like, your best traders. Yeah. All those guys, yeah. yeah. Engineering guys and investment banks are like the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, always... they're the ones that cost the financial meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's MBAs and securities are cool. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so what do you do? Like, tell them about your, your company. Okay, so I co-own a, an investment company called Sidan Ash Capital. Um, we own a couple of businesses across sectors, hospitality, transport, agriculture, um, waste recycling. And then we also help companies on projects raise money. Um, so that's what I've done uh, over two years when I left uh, paid employment. Um, it's not necessarily the, the game was not to own an investment company. Um, the game was just to build businesses. Uh, but we just understood Nigeria very well. Like, the worst thing you can be in Nigeria is to be an SME, right? Hmm. Because if you're an SME, <laughs> everything affects you. And um, learning from the investment world, yeah, the only way to not be an SME is to have right structures. And that's why there's a difference between startups and SMEs, because startups are well positioned to go faster. So the only way for me to hold businesses was to put in a group structure. That way you can then leverage on stuff like governance, processes, um, structures, investor relations are cool. And then you can raise cash to sort of get away from the SME position. Mm. It's not the best place to be in Nigeria. Actually. So so, so let, let me just break it down a little bit, right? Yeah. What you actually do day to day is you find SMEs, structure them as a startup and raise money for them. Or is it something different? Yeah, no, it's totally different. We, we not just find them, we build ours too. So there are some that we found mm. and then we own. But we the, we sort of drive that financing through the group company. Um, then we bring in other resources, um, other leverage that can help them. So from structures to HR to processes mm. um, to raising financing and co. Because if you have one business that has to hire an investor relations, a corporate finance, an HR, um, all those places, you're going to kill them with cost. It was just better to put that under a group structure so that they can support all these businesses one by one. Mm. Um, compliance, government relations, and all those things. So that's how we, and it helped them to so that you can focus on your corporations and you can go faster mm-hmm. that way. Uh, and it also helps to drive value. So that's what we try to do. And you've got recycling, you've got like, you know, Euphoria mm-hmm. by House Nine. You guys need to go there. The food is really Euphoria. good. Euphoria. Oh, you yeah. need to order the squid burger, guys, okay? <laughs> <laughs> is there, is there, is there uh, an IMB um, voucher that we just. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we could walk. We can, we can arrange that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, shout out to Euphoria. I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, you've got a couple, you know, in a, you're in a couple sectors. So yeah. I want to know what has been the most successful so far and what's been the most difficult. Mm. I think, how would I put it? So because of strategic goals, everything has its own success and everyone has its own difficulties. Mm. Um, and if I say the failures, the failures are Nigerian factor and also the fact that um, you have people's problems too. So hospitality was one that I've learned a lot because it's different from other businesses. There's service, there's, you have to have good managers, um, you have to understand leakages, waste and cost and everything. And trust me, Nigeria would kill you. Then you have energy costs, you're paying diesel for eight hundred. Shout out to Pam. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's that's it. So we we have for everyone we have successes. Um, it's just that it's different. For some we first experience the failures before the success. Mm. For some you will get successful first, and then this failure starts to come mm. along the line when you when you when you go. So what just keeps us going is the future, and sometimes we just try to ensure that um, we we don't burn ourselves too much. If I've learned anything you said, Liz, don't do too much in Nigeria, and just try to ensure that the way you're positioned, you are defensive to Nigeria's Marcos mm. really, because it's a, it's a big problem. But how do you stay defensive then? How do you like, you know? Well, it starts from everything you used to run your business. The kind of capital, okay. the kind of people, the kind of partners you have, um, the kind of structures you do. Uh, that's will help you very well because if you go take some kind of capital in Nigeria, um, anything can just like shoot debt, you. like high well, interest debt. Exactly. Mm. You just have to ensure that your cash flows match yes. your, your business. Yeah. yeah. So. And that's why sometimes, like I have, I have a good friend there who works mm -hmm. in a very global firm. Okay. So Toye, Toye works with the EMP. So I divide over to this nah, nah. <laughs> So it once in a while, just to match and see how global companies are doing so that yeah. you also don't lose track. Because sometimes mm. you get so busy with Nigeria's day-to-day -day that you might lose sight of where you want to be. Mm. Right? So you still need to have the right partners that can say, okay, yes, we're facing this now, but don't lose sight of the goal. So yeah. you can ensure that you're still meeting or competing with the guys globally. Mm. Right? Quick quick one. I'll give you a quick disclaimer. This is no investment advice, right? But quick question for you. If I had 10 million naira right now, where would you, and I give to you, where would you put it? Well, that question is deep because... I need to understand what your own objective is. Mm. Okay, yes. let's say, look, I'm just looking for the best option for my money. I don't know anything about, <laughs> I'm just looking for a way if I would stretch. Give it to the sugar baby. You know what I'm saying? Want, exactly, I'm saying, like, it could be, that could be four or five minutes. <laughs> I don't know. The, 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 if, when I, if I don't know what you need it for now, and I feel like you can call for it anytime. I'll just go and buy dollars and keep it. You just hedge dollars. Wow. Dollar. I'll just put it in dollars. Do so, you think you, so you round trip the money. Mm. Because ah. I, you might call for it anytime. So, so if you, you, if you then tell me that, okay, you need it for one after one year, mm. then I start to look at, okay, where can I plug the money mm -hmm. um, for one year? But if you don't tell me, I'll just look for something safe. Just keep it safe. Yeah. yeah. Like, you really Nigeria. keep my money safe. Yeah. But if you give me 10 million now, I know what to do. What would you do? <laughs> I'll just buy some energy shares for you. Energy shares? Yeah. Energy shares are good. Yeah, right now they're good. good. You know, obviously, you know the decision of the OPEC, um, OPEC yeah. to cut production in terms of mm. oil and gas. Yeah, so so that spiked the prices of oil and gas mm. across the world. So it's just smart that you just buy one of our few of those energy <laughs> stocks yeah. and over time. Talking about, I, don't, I won't talk, this is my industry, I won't talk too much about it, but I want to ask you know your opinion. This yeah. is talked about this. What do you think about this whole removal of like fuel subsidy? And you think is it going to happen? And when it happens, what do you think it's going to be like? You know, I think it's obvious um, it's going to happen. You know, you have a capitalist uh, driven government who's going to come <laughs> into place. And uh, you can't continue to to subsidize lives of people who can't afford to drive three, four cars. You know, however, I think building the trust of what the excess funds will be used is what Nigerians are just skeptical about. Mm, but yeah. for me, I think it's an economic decision that we as Nigerians should collectively bear. You know, I was in Ghana recently and I and I filled my car for seventy thousand naira equivalent. In Lagos, yeah, I filled my car with twelve to fifteen thousand naira equivalent. Wow. So you can see the Difference in, in price, energy yeah. cost. And how much we how much we spend in subsidizing fuel? Um, last year was like I think it's a variable number. Trillion. It's not fixed. It's in, not fixed. It's it not fixed. Depends on what the landing mm. prices. Oh, wow. but, but it's just something that has to happen because even for the downstream sector. So what does subsidy mean? Yep. When you are importing fuel, you have only one person that is buying from you, which is the government. Because if you import it and you sell to the market directly, mm. you will lose money because there's a fixed price. Mm. So you have one buyer. Right, and also you that you're buying, you have one seller, so it's not an efficient market because there's one hand 
that is sort of being in the space. Taking, yeah. So you need to take go your guard of the space. If you want to subsidize, subsidize the people that are actually buying it. Like subsidize them directly by what they are said, reduce their cost, ensure you fund infrastructure, transport to them directly. And that's the only way you can do it. Because like you said, the big how many liters of fuel is consumed in rural areas? Like you don't they don't consume as much. Mm -hmm. So you're subsidizing the rich. The guy with the SUV, the guy with the big cars, and all those. You know, things, yeah. but, but then again, it still reflects on the on the price for goods that they use in and, these and areas how, and and generators and, yeah. and things like yeah, that. Yeah, but that's diesel, right? Yeah, so yeah, diesel cars. Yeah, yeah. diesel is regulated already. So yeah. everybody's feeling it. Companies, yeah. transport, and alcohol. Yeah, it's just so, the petrol side of things. I mean, he runs a solar energy company. So, I, I, oh. from your perspective, I would love to know: Have you looked into? renewable energies for your businesses because you have a lot of brick and mortar yeah. businesses mm -hmm. in your portfolio have you looked into yeah i mean it's something you were, we were talking about it today energy is a big problem and mm. um, we want to do renewable energy um but i think that the the key problem with renewable energy is also around size and cost right mm. so yeah. if i had all my factories in one place and i can afford to put a solar system but when you look at the cost of funding it immediately so yeah after you f for renewable energy is more capex than operating expense because i put the batteries put everything there and i don't need to spend any money again but that cost of financing and the available financing today mm. doesn't really help you right to, yeah. to do that so if i had someone who's going to fund it for me and then i pay like a charge or a rate and, and stuff like that mm. like a power purchase agreement then that would be great for most mm. companies to do but because we are most business in nigeria are very fragmented Right, so you cannot put all your solar in one place. You have different factories and cool. Mm. So I think um, what we help is corporations across what you do. Like I, I told you about a story, a street where they all had generators, 30 kV, and then one guy came to assess the street and realized that, see, all you guys don't need even, all, the whole street just needs three generators, mm. and that's mm. all. So he told them, see, I'll buy all your generators from you. I'll set up two, and then you guys can just be paying a fee. Mm. And so, those are the kind of corporations that are required to allow solar energy to thrive because you have to bring all the users into one place and then sell to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that cost of um, buying it is what mm. most of the same Batteries yeah. today worth like maybe one million naira mm. per, per this thing. And so mm. it's quite a bit. We, we try to do an assessment at our hotel and they yeah. said it will cost us like six something million naira to, to put up solar. solar and batteries. Mm. That's why it should come to plan because we can give you that PPA that you're talking about. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll talk about that after anyway. Yeah. Okay. So so for me, like living in Nigeria as a young handsome man like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm and and, and no, talking no, this no, big no, money, no, this no, guy's no, I'll probably go to Zoya and see twenty bottles of the table. I've been to Zoya with him before. So please explain to us how you survive how you survive this place. Mm-hmm. I survived Lagos. Yeah. I survived Lagos. Oh, <laughs> that was suffering and smiling, right? Uh, I think it dis dis just defines what Lagos is. The opportunities, it's not the best, just trust me, in terms of basic. But we just try to stay focused and positive, right? And that's why people find a way to have their own fun, right? So entertainment life is big in Lagos. I, I, and it is, I just think it can be better. So for me, it's, Lagos also has a very funny structure, even in terms of social life. Um, different people, there are a lot of, uh, I don't want to call it users now, but everybody just try to exploit. Value the next man, size the next man up, and take value. So you just have to ensure that whoever comes into your circle, right, has to be, has to hang it, not just, mm. oh, it's my guy. You know, we call that what the Lagos, it's very much your brother, guy, sister, yeah. my guy, yeah. So, yeah, that's the only way to stay sane in Lagos. Keep the circle, let people hang it, mm. right, and then just ensure that you know the difference between brother, friend, acquaintances, mm. and just understand what happiness means to you, and then you just can't keep going. Lagos is uh, funny people. I've been in Lagos like all my life, apart from when I travel for school and other things. Yeah, very yeah. hedonistic place. Yeah, uh, but you've also yeah you travelled for school and you went to the UK, right? Yeah. And and I know you said to me one time that you could just see that that was not where you wanted to be. You mm. know, so I wanted to know what your thoughts actually on the UK and why do you think that this mess in Lagos is still better than the UK in some aspects. Okay, so it depends on, I don't think, I think it's more personal about my own ambition and what I derive from happiness, right? So for some people, fantastic, stable job, um, beauty life around it, retire makes them happy. For me, joy, it's more intrinsic. The values I'm creating, the jobs I'm creating, I like to see the fact that I've been able to bring my idea or what I've learned into a system that doesn't work and, and do that too. So, 
I, your mother has staying in, in London, any country, I would, I won't feel satisfied if I've not been able to bring that to Lagos or build something. And also because I also know where I'm coming from, um, I've, I've, I've been on both sides of the world in Lagos, so I really understand how people feel. I work with, I, I do real sector, so I work with uh, collectors, waste collectors, and so I really understand that. So there's joy in the fact that you're creating jobs, you see families going to school, you can do that, and for me, that's happiness for me. So mm. if I can do that in another country, yeah, but I think I understand it better in Lagos and Nigeria, and that's why I'm more, I'm more satisfied to stay in Lagos. Mm. Mm. And, and how do you think we compare to other African countries that you've been to? Well, I think it's more opportunity, really. Uh, that's what differentiates Lagos from other African countries. The numbers, we have the numbers, we have the demand, and we have the consumption. And because of that, it's big. And then the market also gets bigger because there's like an artificial demand or economy mm. from diasporas and from any other place. I mean, I, I, I would like to, well, you know, when we talk about diaspora remittance, it's, you have to unpack it. The money different layers. Different, exactly. <laughs> so, but there's that artificial economy. So that, that just keeps Lagos going. And that's why I think it's different from other countries for that. Because if you look at the problems with Nigeria, if other countries have experienced the same problems with Nigeria, I mean, they'll be worse off. So we are sort of like defensive because we have the market, we have the people, mm -hmm. and we have the enterprising mind, we have the skill. Mm -hmm. So we're able to withstand the shock. Some countries have not even gone through what Nigeria has gone through, and they've yeah. just been bad. Ghana is uh, one country like that. So I think that's what keeps us going, and that's why we're we are better. We just need right leadership, the right people that can see it and then build it, and trust me, mm -hmm. we'll, be, we'll be better. Okay. So, engineer, I want to know a little bit oh. about you, please. Eh? Eh, Tell me. Uh, what, what are you into? Because I'm here, you were, you were one day trying to save the world, you know, and now you are in that finance and look at financial models oh. and, and, and raising money. You so, are. please, <laughs> dive deeper. Let me know why and what you do. No, so, so I'm an engineer during the day. Okay. Oh, really? You know? So, I, I don't do pure engineering anymore. Obviously, I'm in finance and control with one of the major um, energy companies in the world. So I get to do that and during the day, but you know I'm a serial investor. I'm a bottling business have owner. Money to throw around. You know I like to have equity in, in innovations and creative ideas. So you know he's he's one that is always bringing a lot of ideas to the table, and you know we can bring out the finance to to make that idea. Ah, so so what, what are some of the interesting ideas that you're seeing? You don't need to talk about specific company, but maybe ideas. Um, for me, it's it's agri tech, um, mm. it's, you know, some startups um, mm. trying to see how you can meet the supply chain challenges mm. in, yeah. in in the agricultural industry. I think there's a big opportunity there in terms of volume and in terms of the opportunity to impact people's lives mm. directly. So, yeah, that's one sector. Then you know you get a lot of pitches from time to time, and you look at the one that gives you the best ROI. <laughs> so you just get ROI. Right? Not, even, not even thinking about impact. Just okay. ROI. It, it, it all depends. You look at the immediate return, and you also look at. The, uh, it, has, it has to be win-win for everybody. It has to be win-win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, no. it's not charity. Yeah. I'm, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm hearing that uh, this uh, palm oil sector is very yeah, lucrative. Yeah, palm oil. Yeah. Uh, do you have any yeah. any uh, any uh, kind of eyes into that or? Or coins into that. Well, agri. Uh, you always find your way to something, right? Um, but you know why people don't? Why do you, I don't just jump into opportunities? Because Nigeria has a lot of opportunities, yeah. uh, but the problem is risk mm. and it's value chain. Yes, they, they'll tell you that. Okay, it's biscuit selling Nigeria. It sells in Nigeria, right? But how to get a biscuit from the manufacturer? Not even how to, how to get the input to produce the biscuit and to produce it and get it to the seller mm. or the buyer is where the problem is. Transportation. My cities in the ports that has not cleared, right? Oh, so we bought it there. In the way they are producing it, somebody has stole one ton instead of five tons. So instead of you getting 10 cartons, you now have nine cartons, right? <laughs> you have all those small stuff, uh, you're transporting it to Lagos. One guy tells you that my tire is, they stole the tire. You broke they, exactly. So if you don't understand that, you'll just be, you're just making money for people, mm -hmm. right? People would drop off you, really, and then you lose money. So before you go into an opportunity, like if I look at Palm Oil, I ask myself, do we have everything it takes to actually yeah. run that sector, get it to the end user? Transportation, enabler, supply chain is a very big problem in Nigeria because you have to almost import everything that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Agriculture today, if I buy a typical Nigerian seed, the yields are lower than if I import the seed from India. Right, wow. because of innovation research that they've done. Wow. So if I really want to be profitable in agriculture, I have to bring imported seeds. And then that's a supply chain risk that so, comes yeah. in. And if I produce finish, before I get it to where I will store, I could lose 
a lot of farmers lose half of their products because of lack oh. of storage. Mm. Transportation. If I want to transport, if somebody is a farm now, if I have a truck, I take your tr your cross from, let's say, the village to the city. Mm. Being the transporter, I would get more profit than you that mm. actually that thing, yeah, yeah. Because the real value is, the problems are where the money is. Supply chain, transportation, logistics, and co. So that's what I tell people before you jump into an opportunity. Ask yourself, how does this thing get to the end user? Mm. What are the risks there? You have to follow the money. Or how, do, how, do, how do you guys deal with money. yeah? Follow the money, but how do you guys deal with trust? Because obviously we're living in a very low trust environment, right? How do you deal with trust here yeah, when it comes to business? Um, trust is the foundation of leadership. You know, I learned that in business school. So, you know, like I was telling my friend, most of our challenges in Nigeria are more behavioral. Um, you know, as a leader, you just need to be able to accommodate, you know, yeah. divergent opinions at all time, and that's what boosts, mm -hmm. you know, the old creativity in the business. You know, we, we have our challenges, we argue, you know, we disagree, we are human, but however, well, you know, we've known each other common. from, come on, we've developed the trust, we've built the network. I don't think at this point in time, families are involved. So it's it's just beyond, it's beyond cash now. Yeah. It's, it's it's a blood thing now. Mm. So the, the thing in Nigeria too, you you have to follow your goals, first of all. Mm. Um, it's also not fair to think that everybody is trying to game you. Right, uh, people are actually sincere, and sometimes because they say uh, when 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 problems go, like they say, may your loyalty not be tested. So you can't expect someone who is trying to eat, and you're telling about um, I'm trying to be the flutter ways to be. <laughs> 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 That's why you're talking to the wrong people. Are you, are you expecting not to take 20 now and go and eat from your business? Like, give him food. Yeah. Right? Let him eat first. So you need to. They, they say first of all, in a, yeah. you don't look Maslow at you don't look at money needs, yeah. how you see it. You have to look at money from the next man's point. Mm. One million naira. If I drop on the table, shall I might leave it? One million naira. Somebody else will see it and be like, man, oh. I will take this money and leave my dear. <laughs> so I have to see one million naira from your perspective and not from my perspective. Right? So you have to. Give people that chance, um, gods and all those things. But majorly, you still have to put structures in place. Mm, yeah. Or else, fact. That's it. That's the only sustainable way to uh -huh. trust people, uh -huh. but still allow some level of checks. And there's something I've also learned in Nigeria is that you have to actually allow some level of let go. Let, let go. If I was mm. doing test, because if you think that nobody would take from you, uh, you might <laughs> yeah, you lose money. You lose money. Yeah. You lose money. I learned the thing. There was one guy that was working with us. And not like the 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 leakages were. I mean, roughly five percent of mm. what we had. I thought it was big, and I like, man, get out. When well, we brought the experts, ah, oh, well, that one was like, this guy was an expert. So when you now say leakage of thirty percent, no, this one has stole more. Ah. You start to like, oh, yeah, guy, come. That your five percent is okay. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> we can manage that yeah, one. Like, come back, come guy. back. Let this guy stay. So you have to allow those things. Like you can't, you can't, you can't look at everything. Yeah, even uh, we had a guest a while ago, and then he was saying that when he started business, he creates like an avenue, a circle of money that they can steal. He, he don't monitor it. Just okay, this money here is for stealing. So he wouldn't work too much. <laughs> yeah, we allow you to steal that one, but don't go and eat the big money. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it's when it's when it's now becoming too much that you you look at the board. Yeah. Uh, the the people have basic problems, yeah. and so as a business too, it's important that you find a way to solve it. As against just paying them salaries. Mm. Sometimes we do stuff like cooperatives. Right, um, uh, so that they can have savings, they can build stuff, um, and it helps because we can buy things in bulk for them. It seems that they will buy expensive in the market, mm. um, because we bring it together, then mm. they can get it cheaper. So mm. you want one bag of rice, one bag of rice, but I can negotiate for twenty bags of rice at a cheaper rate. You get so the moment you start to eat into their welfare, mm, right, their lifestyle, they, yeah. yeah, so those kind of things. So you know, you know, you are working with people that want to pay school fees, mm. and you think that you will not pay them. They won't pay school fees, and then you expect that one million will sit down your. Why don't you just borrow them the money? Because borrow them are taking from somewhere. Like yeah. you just have to understand that you need to once in a while care about their welfare. Mm. I learned that I was there was a time when I was work, when I got into business. Not like I didn't care, but I didn't see it because I was too busy with other things, and then you don't know that these are happening. Going through, so yeah. the best thing is also to have a partner or someone that. The work is actually to look at staff welfare mm. and just have alliance. People, mm. this is what you want to learn. Um, are the opportunities across board that we can fit you in, right? Mm. So that what so that I'm I'm solving your 
or meeting your objective by you helping me to meet my own objective. Mm. And then it's mutual. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way you can actually be sustainable trust because it's more mutual partnership. Yeah, more mutual partnership. Because stuff in Nigeria is a very big problem. Right? Yeah, it's like yeah. You don't get it right. It, it can is. really affect your business. Yeah, it so. is. It mm -hmm. is. It is. Oh, yeah. And what do you think about the Japa culture? You know, is it affecting your business? Are your peers japaing? Like, I have no friends left. Literally, I've literally lost. Wow. You know. Yeah, I think everyone has lost. Yeah, yeah you lost a couple of friends, friends, yeah. to, friends to Japa. colleagues, and, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's driven by the economic conditions. You know, the macros are not good in Nigeria. Um, people are losing revenue on a daily basis, and it affects every business because in terms of manpower, you lose your best exactly. staff. Yeah. You know, that's an intangible value that you can't quantify in business. Yeah. You know, people, you can't quantify the value anyone brings to your business. So what do we do about it? Those are the questions that we should start asking ourselves mm -hmm. going forward. You, you know, I, I'll go a very interesting story about Jack Bud. I had a staff remember, right? Trained the guy, yeah. very smart Imagine. guy. Guy, Jack Bud, right? Imagine. But he was working on a project with a partner in, in the other country that he Jack Bud to. I just called the partner and said, listen, that my guy there, hire him right now. That's going back that's that's <laughs> and, and right now, he's working back, he's working from the way, but he's working in Nigeria. Yeah. That's but chess, the partner chess. hired him. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, like I speak to companies and you realize that the someone that has traveled to maybe Canada is still working for them for one year because they don't found a replacement. Mm. Right? Because yeah. sometimes you even pay more for less value. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I think I think it's just it's more collective in terms of how we can solve it. Because if you ask yourself, I think we we're talking about it one time, how many big companies today have done graduate programs? They don't do anymore. Everybody's looking for plug and play. Mm -hmm. right? So and this plug and play too were because they also built capacity. Oh. Right. So why are companies not doing graduate programs again where you have one thousand people just teaching them basic stuff so that they can be employable? Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what kind of or else we get to a level. It's already happening in hospitality. Check it today. All the big hospitality managers, they're not Nigerians. We're we're now creating expatriates yeah. because there's nobody here again. They're not Nigerians. If you any big hotel or club that yeah. is bubbling, it has to be that be a Lebanese well, manager yeah. or yeah. some kind yeah. of thing yeah. like that. Yeah. And that's what happening because of this Jack Passage. People are not even willing. You can't teach people again. People don't have time to want to teach people because they've also had that experience where they train 10 people and then eight go. Mm. So they don't even want to train again. It's like mm. yeah. plug and play. But it affects the economy entirely because exactly. you would find it hard to hire people. Hire new people, and yeah. Exactly, that's what's going to happen. But we can't run away from it. I think we ever just have to try a way to teach people once in a while as small companies, internship can help. Like just get the wrong young guys and just train them with internship and see how it goes. But I faced it. I met people, I've had people work with me that have gone, right? And some of them still work with me. Mm. Right? For me, my own focus is um, there's Japa syndrome, but it also means that there's an expansion of the Nigerian economy because. Nigeria, there's the Nigerian economy in Canada now. Mm. Exactly. Economy in London. Exactly. Yeah. Economy, yeah. I like that yeah. though. That's a I good thing. But yeah. sometimes it, it can it can reflect good things in the country as well. Like the whole talk about remittance, yeah. different yeah. transfer remittance. Yeah. You can yeah. talk about like uh, shared exporting, knowledge exporting. transfer. If you go to a typical yeah. store now in the UK, I'm sure you see a Nigerian shop. Yeah. I went to like my, my cousin was showing me a video, and in their uh, nursery school, there's four languages and there's a cabo. Right, in the yeah. typical UK school, yeah. I studied that there's an economy there. Mm -hmm. So for me, is I'll just focus on the opportunity and stop fretting yeah. about the problems which I Facts. cannot solve. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, true. And and there's a lot, there's a lot of people in Nigeria. So people, some people need to leave. There's a lot of people. The population is a lot. It's crazy. A lot. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, like not, say, not the talent. That's the thing. The people who are losing talent is the issue. Yeah. Like they say, creativity is an import export business. Yeah. You know, it's also an opportunity for us as oh, Nigerians yeah. to export some of our local things to the diaspora. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, make, just like Indian model, it. right? That's what it is. You just have to now start creating economies there. So yeah. you just imagine having, you know, just top of my head, having a the place in London mm -hmm. where Nigerians are concentrated. You can, you can stimulate the demand for yeah. that kind of place. So it's yeah. it's good to, it's also... And it's also good for, good for network as well. Like, it just, it's, because right now, there's no country I can go into in this world right now that I don't know that I can, I can meet a network of Nigerians. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. everywhere. Yeah, it's We're like, everywhere. you just find somebody, oh, I know one of my guys. Oh, yeah, sure. like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's also, sometimes it could be a, a good thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, doctor asked everyone this question. If you were the president of Nigeria, what would you do differently? Okay. Um, mine would be more behavioral. So, I would stop um, going abroad for medical treatment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for leadership. I, I, I say that because, you know, the kind of leadership we practice in Nigeria is top down. 
yeah. you know, we're not a bottom-up society. You know, the low, the middle doesn't influence what happens. It's the top that influences the bottom. I think that as a public official or as a number one citizen, it's my own personal opinion. You know, don't bash me on social media if you hear this. It's just disrespectful for a country of 200 million people with the best doctors in the world for a president to still be going to a foreign country to be treated by a foreign individual. You know, if you check Nana Akufuado, he swore not to do that. And I think that these are some of the behavioral changes we need in the kind of leadership that we have at the top. So for me, if I was the president of Nigeria, hopefully I am fit, um, like President Peter <laughs> Gregory will be. Are you trained jobs? <laughs> uh, I'm not trained jobs. I'm just saying that, you know, we're coming from, look at this present administration, okay, when he entered in 2015. The first foreign trip our president made was to go for ear, nose, and throat treatment, an ENT. In a nation like Nigeria, it is a basic medical thing. A anybody basic medical thing. Yeah. If you go to shops or if you go to any of all these places, they will get you get treated. Yeah. So why do me as the number one citizen, if I don't, if I cannot validate the technical expertise of my doctors, and you I want, want me, the common you. citizen, who is trying to make a life to just trust my 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 life oh, yeah. you know some things are behavioral and that's why i said look at the president elect yes he's the president elect mm. you know however the trend is going to continue so you don't expect any changes in the health sector yeah just by that for me so yeah. uh, <laughs> well i, I share a different opinion um mm -hmm. because what you said is perfect right but i always look at different factors that what are the immediate problems I mean, it, I mean, it was my tenor, right? What do I need to do? I can't fix everything, right? So I'll figure out what I can do quickly and then build a roadmap for any other person that can change it. And unlike him, I'm more, maybe, yeah, be real, I, I don't know, but I'm more optimistic about um, the government that we're expecting um, because the my own. You are think, going political. Yeah. <laughs> we asked you what yeah, would you okay, do okay, so, so, if you were the president. So my, my, if I'm the president, my major focus, and there's a lot of details to it, is just to ensure that the government has no business doing many things and okay. give it to the private sector okay. and just focus on putting the structure there and being a regulator. Government has no business running airports. Government has no business running transport. And that's where we have problems today. Why should look at, for example, mm. MPA, mm. Port Authority is shipping, right? Mm -hmm. So why should a politician be the MD of MP? Why not the former MD of Musk to come and drive my port, mm. right? So why should I be a DG of fan who is mm. a politician to drive my airport? So the first thing, is, and that's the quick fix, is government has no business running many things that they are running today in Nigeria. And once you can privatize all these things, then it helps the country because when you make money, these guys would build it well. Like if you check today, why is Nigeria good today? Four policies that was done in 1999. Um, um, telecoms, privatization, mm -hmm. banking sector consolidation, pension reforms, and primary health care. Mm -hmm. And that's why today you have fintech. That's why today you have good banks. That's why today um, there's money funding debt of Nigerian government. So you just can tell that if you just leave some things to private sector. Mm -hmm. All this issue of, oh, rails are too expensive to run, they've been doing a rail for 10 years and all those things. You can't expect a private guy to do a rail and it will not work, mm. right? So, he has debt to pay. You know, <laughs> to pay. As much as I agree with you, Kay, privatization is the way, but do you agree that also our leadership has privatized the prosperity of the country? Okay. I'm not, I'm not but if you privatize... So, so, so why do you want to privatize the prosperity of the country to your pocket. Yes, that's what I was about to say. For me, that's, that's my biggest you challenge. If you are going to privatize with the intention have, of privatizing... The prosperity. No, if yeah. you are privatizing with the intention of the prosperity belonging to the people for the sake of the money, you know, the more economic prosperity we have in Nigeria, yeah. the more the safer Nigeria would be, you know, the better Nigeria would be. Our guys in diaspora yeah, will come at least and put somebody that knows what they're doing. That's what no, he's so trying The difference is that what you're saying is that, yeah, you're, you, what you're saying so, is... See, it, intent, that's what's not. It starts so with intent. How, how we, you are questioning how we privatize. No, I've seen examples right. of the but privatization privatize. in Lagos. Mm. So maybe we should just focus on how do we then privatize? Are yes. we privatizing? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I, I agree. We need, agree. To, we need yeah. to privatize. Some maybe so we are I not agree privatizing the right way. Yeah. Maybe we can say that. Exactly more. I agree with yeah. you. So yeah. if, we, if we want to privatize, then let's do it the right way. Mm. Exactly. Everything in Nigeria that is running today is things that were important. One exactly. of the biggest problems with our power sector is we copied a power sector reform from another country, India power sector reform. Okay. But we missed it because we sold power sector to guys who never really had the experience. In India, they, they were they were 
certain there were certain metrics you have to be run be running power sector for maybe five years mm -hmm. you can't maximum debt level has to be maybe 50 percent of your capital mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. but, it. There but was i'm no a big boy in nigeria <laughs> and i have a bank i will just collect the loan and buy a power set and then one year down the line i'm making a loss and i'm complaining mm -hmm. right listen i'm not yeah, i can't yeah, even invest there was, in the power there was more focus on the financial mm -hmm. criteria yes i mean yeah. so financial criteria so it's not like they didn't they didn't privatize but they didn't do it the right way mm -hmm. and so these guys yeah didn't even have money to invest because they took loans and co and then everybody's complaining about the private sector it, but you see telecoms yeah. the big boys came mtn who had understanding about telecoms um, all these guys that came were imported guys who run it before and that's why it worked because they knew that they would have to invest for five years ten years put the money there yes. and they would not even buy it at that value because if you call it let's say if you call it schneider electric or a g to come and buy nigeria as a set they would discount all those things by half because they know that they will still have to invest mm -hmm. so it's how we privatize that's exactly. the problem Here but we give it do we have to privatize yes. we have to of course Government can be running all this no, Okay. I'm just the intent of the privatization for right. me is, 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 is key. don't if you want to privatize privatize for the sake of the public and good we don't privatize for the sake of expanding your, your business uh, uh, and, and you know I'm gonna end on a controversial question <laughs> yeah do you think that foreigners should be able to own land in Nigeria um, do you think that we should restrict maybe some of the businesses, even as you talk about privatization, who we give it to is not just maybe the cronies of the government, but also foreign entities? I want to know your thoughts around selling off the country, basically. Hmm. That's that's a tough question, to be honest. For me, I, I think the, the easiest way is to follow the mm, oil, oil and gas yes, sector. The exactly, I was going to say that. National content. Foreigners come, they bring their money, they run, but you create a board that ensures that the, the interest country, yeah. of the country. Yeah. That's why today you don't need a foreigner to do oil service in Nigeria. Yeah. Mm. Because it's exactly. a local country. In fact, when we export oil services, now we export oil every, service. A Nigerian can do all this. To things. Angola, to Gabon. Mm. The big oil fields that they've run, it's Nigerian guys that have done yeah. all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you do that and put proper local content policy that, yeah. okay, every project done, there must be maybe 40% Nigerian and yes, this kind exactly. of like, you realize that at the end of the day, you build capacity. Mm, but exactly. we're not doing that. If you go to some quote-unquote factories or refineries in Nigeria, there's 95% yeah. foreigners. Chinese, mm. Chinese, so who is, yeah. who is transferring knowledge to? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Who is ensuring that some Nigerians are learning from mm. this thing? So that's where, I think if we sure. just use oil and gas sector as the template to prioritize other sectors, uh, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a deliberate effort. It's, you know, you have to be deliberate about it. Yeah. You have to make sure that you are willing to use Nigerian resources even if they fail. Yeah. Mm. And you have to understand that failure is part of the process. Mm. Most times, Nigerian leaders, yes. we do not all Nigerians generally, not even leaders, we're all leaders, mm. but Nigerians generally do not like the notion of failure Fear, because yeah. we just think that once you fail, it's done. It's done. <laughs> Whereas, if you look at most of the inventions, before yeah. they got to the point where the invention was activated, there was a lot yeah. of failure. So, for me, I think we should be ready to just accept. So yeah, we would fail and pick up and, and pick up. And all those yeah, things, yeah. That, that's a that's a good place to end that. Thank you very much for coming again yeah, and definitely really good to have you. Yeah, I really enjoyed yeah. that. Looking forward to having you guys again. Definitely. Um, cool. and, and so check out where do we find out about Cedars and Ash? Um, so you can find us on Instagram, Cedar and Ash, um, IG. Um, Sidana to oh, Instagram ID, sorry, same thing. Uh, website uh, sccapital.com.ng. Mm -hmm. And then my name is Kyle Moshibi. If you check on me, if you check me there. And we have all the businesses, Scrap Bank, that's our recycling company. Mm -hmm. um, Inani Trading is the agro, so they're all on social media and code. Yeah. Nice, mm -hmm. we check it out. Yeah. That's good. Good vibes. Yeah. See you next week, guys. Definitely.